Welcome to Technotis. This is the Asus Z690, I, I mean, Z790. Wait a second. What the heck is the difference? Z690, Z790. They look very similar and it can be confusing. What's the difference? So in this video, we're going to try to find the differences between these two top level creator motherboards. Let's go. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out Hookies through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out Hookies.com in the video description below. Now, usually I focus on only one of the motherboards to do really in-depth overview of the motherboard. But when I started looking at this motherboard and really diving deeper into it, I had one massive question. What exactly has changed since the Z690? Because it looks pretty much exactly the same. So when you're going to put these on the ASUS website and try to compare these uh, motherboards, it's not very accurate just because ASUS has made some typos and some text differences so even though you're looking at different things they look like they're different but exactly the same thing or sometimes they're missing one feature out from the other one even though they have it so the comparison on asus website isn't exactly you know correct for example if you look at the back of the motherboards here this is the z790 and this is new you can see that everything is pretty much the same you can see here this big sign that says pca gen 5 and says 16 gigabits per second per lane what the heck is this here the newer one obviously says 32 gigabytes, which is the correct one. PCIe Gen 5 is 32 gigabits per second per lane. What, what, what's, what's this here? Why didn't we see this before? That's PCIe Gen 4. So they just copy pasted this from Gen 4. Then if we're looking at like all the specs in here. So for example, the back panel IO is exactly the same. The USBs are exactly the same. Wireless Bluetooth, exactly the same. Apart from the Z790 actually supports Bluetooth 5.3 as well. So it's interesting. Here we see version 5.2 hardware ready. So it was probably waiting for software update or some, I don't know. Anyway, the LAN is exactly the same, but on ASUS website, when you do the LAN comparison, you can see that one looks different than the other one just because they've missed out the AQtion, um, like kind of name on one side of the things. Then we have the audio features. And if you look at the thing, one is like eight channel high definition audio and one is 7.1 surround sound high definition audio. You're like, oh, oh, which is different? Well, they both use the S1220A audio codec, which is actually exactly the same. 7.1 is 8 channels, so it's exactly the same thing, just the wording is slightly different. It's exactly the same. The CPU, um, Z690 says only 12th gen, but actually it does support 13th now as well. Z690 chipset, Z790 chipset, memory exactly the same, graphics exactly the same, expansion slots here. Now that is slightly different and we're going to talk about that in a moment and storage is exactly the same as well. So then let's have a look at the Z790. Let's see what has changed then. What do we get in here that's different? Okay, Wi-Fi antenna. I bet that this is exactly the same. I'd be surprised if it hasn't. Exactly the same one. And they, I don't know, they don't need to change it right now because it is very, very good antenna. We have the motherboard. We'll put that on the side. Then the instruction manuals. Then, oh, okay. We get an extra ruler. The Z690 didn't get the ruler, but the X670E from uh, Asus as well, the ProArt one for the AMD systems, um, obviously had exactly the same thing as well. So that's cool. We've got one uh, little rubber cover slot here. <laughs> that's extra, that's different. DP cable, uh, we've got these standoff stickers for the M.2s if you need them. Some SATA cables, how many SATA cables do we have? Four. So all of them are exactly the same. And we have also the front panel plug here. So you can put all your front panel kind of headers in there and then plug it into the motherboard. Makes the building process slightly easier. Okay, on the left side we have Z790 and on the right side we have Z690. 
And uh, I know I have some other motherboard cover here for the socket. It's actually exactly the same. I can't remember where I put this cover. But a lot of the things are very, very similar. Um, I do want to say one more thing. The, these holes are actually the same on here as well on the set 7, 690. But I've got uh, some kind of AIO like washers on top of there. So it looks like there's only one hole, but there is actually two there as well, just so you're not confused. So we've got to see like what's the actual differences on the motherboard, because when you look at them, they they look exactly the same to so the actual SMDs on the motherboard they look identical here some of the design has changed but if you look at all of these like little things then they look very very similar okay here I see one capacitor or some kind of thing is slightly smaller now on the left side here but everything else looks exactly the same obviously now we've got this rubber level little captive thing that can go over there and that will make your motherboard much, much better. First of all, design, as always, Asus, big, big thumbs up for you. I am liking this design. The more minimal, the more shapes we have, the less gamer, all that sort of jazz. Don't need any of these. This is nice. So obviously there is slightly changed this top kind of bit of the cover. And they've chiseled this corner off and made this corner round in here. And instead of having these dots in there, this kind of brushed finish, on there as well the dim slots are exactly the same but here is the biggest difference number one biggest difference is the memory support now i'm not sure if asus is going to update the memory kind of stability support for the z690 as well but if you just look at the specs alone then the z790 supports more higher frequency ram like if we get towards like the 7000 mega transfers per second 7.5 8000 and so on then the proad z790 supports more than the 7 z690 you can see that on the asus website but that should be a simple thing that they can basically copy paste to update on both of these motherboards because i don't see why one shouldn't support higher than the other one because it's really to do with the cpu memory controller rather than the actual memory control of the motherboard the motherboard is kind of like a middle guy who communicates between the cpu and the ram which should be just exactly the same on both of the systems in terms of power delivery is exactly the same all the headers on the motherboards are exactly the same another thing i can see a difference here is we've got a little uh, corner here that's different here obviously here we have typed in m.2 pcie for 4.0, 4.0, 4.0. But now we have nothing in there. We just have these cute little corners. And I like that. We don't need to write this on the motherboard. You probably know that already. We don't need to type this on the motherboard. Put it in the marketing material, on the box. Yeah, but not on the motherboard. I like when it's a bit more cleaner. So that's a nicer thing here. That crystal sound has changed, slightly changed here as well, even though it's exactly the same thing. But second big thing that has changed is this Asus. Thank you for this, okay? Every single motherboard from now on should have this. The GPU release button here, instead of having just manual, trying to put your screw here, as you can see, I have used this loads. You can see screwdrivers, scrape marks in there because I've literally just opened this, the GPU here, I don't know how many times. That is much better. Just push the button, it opens it. Why haven't we thought about this before? This is brilliant. Okay, I'm just literally diving deep into the nitty gritty of both manuals to see really what is the difference. And third big difference between these motherboards is the expansion slots. The Z690 has this bottom expansion slot here. This is X16, uh, you know, slot, but even though it's uh, only X4, uh, you know, pins are in here basically. So on the set 690, this is Gen 3. So PCIe 3.0 X4 slot here, even though like full size, so you can have some full, you know, lockage of cards and all sorts. On the Z790, this is PCIe Gen 4. So X4 slot. So in theory, you could have an extra M.2 slot in there as well but all the rest of the things are exactly the same both of them have two pca5 slots so the first one is x16 slot and the second one when you put anything in there it's going to be x8 slot so both of them run exactly the same and the ender twos here aren't pca gen 5 either so the z790 doesn't support gen 5 ssds either only one singular um heatsink on the top and the thermal pad on the top no difference if you're looking at the other ones as well the screws open a bit harder than on the z690 so exactly the same 
just one heat sink there and here exactly the same so the heat sinks even are exactly the same as you can see exactly the very 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 same and just to double check the io of the motherboard is exactly the same as well we have some usb ports wi-fi 6a audio ports everything is here exactly the same as on the z790 i'll leave the nice sticker on there if you look at the back side of the motherboard then um, okay 790 we've got an extra like little rubber washer on there for this screw rather than that one uh, i guess that's something extra anything else is exactly the same there is uh something different here as well obviously it could be the chipset what's going on here because the chipset is somewhere over here so there's four chips in here rather than two and two laid out in there so it's slightly changed again but the rest is exactly the same. So if you truly want to know what this Z790 ProWatt motherboard can do and what are some of the features, then I highly recommend you go check out the Z690 overview of this because it's exactly the same apart from the differences that I just made you because I don't want to just make the same difference. For example, there's some clever things going on with the front USB-C and so on. So I recommend you go check that out. But now the big question then is, should you buy the Z790 over the Z690? Because I've seen some comments and uh, there was one person who says like, oh, you should test it with Z790 because that's what's meant for 13th gen. Oh, I'm on a Z690 right now, but I want to go with the 13th gen, so I'm going to buy a Z790 motherboard. No, you don't need to do that. Both of these motherboards support 12th and 13th gen. So if you want to go for the 13th gen from this Z690, then you completely can. You just buy the new CPU, pop it in there, update the BIOS, off you go, voila, see you later. But here's the thing. Now you go check out the pricing in the description below and you just see which one is cheaper because I think you should go with whichever one is cheaper. Now the Z690 is most likely going to go out of production faster than the Z790 because that's newer board has tiny little features better than the Z690 but if you can find the Z690 cheaper than the Z790 just go with the Z690 no problem at all just exactly the same motherboard you get exactly the same performance everything is just the same right i don't see any difference okay i do see like tiny minor differences but it doesn't make a difference in terms of which motherboard you're going to go for the performance is going to be exactly the same and the main features are exactly the same just tiny little usability things are better on the z790 but knowing probably the price difference between these two the z690 is going to be a much better pick but if you're wondering which pc to build that is the best for you the best bank for buck create a pc for you then check out the links in the description there's a pc build guide there four part video series you pick the video that's closest to your budget and then you can configure it up and down and then just get the best performance for you i'll explain everything in the video everything is in there and even one of the motherboards is supporters are suggested over there so go check that out thanks for watching likes and subs and i'll see you next time adios